Our subject tonight is how Google works, and we'll examine that question in more than just theory. Google Executive Chairman Eric Schmidt and Senior Vice President Jonathan Rosenberg are here, and they'll be discussing their new book by the same title. How Google Works is surprising and candid and filled with anecdotes. And most of all, it is an authentic inside look at the culture and practices behind one of the world's most successful companies. And what a moderator we have to lead that discussion. Marissa Meyer, President and CEO of Yahoo, herself Google's 20th employee. She saw a lot of this from the inside and she's now seeing it again from the CEO's office and I can't wait for them to get started. Please join me in welcoming Eric, Jonathan, and Marissa. Welcome. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, John. Thank you. I am so delighted to be here tonight. I, I have so many, <laughs> I, we have so many action items for you, Marissa. Just like I'm, old times. I'm, I'm sure, but I will say, I've gotten a chance to work with both of these gentlemen for, gentlemen for a decade. Uh, and they are my two longest standing mentors. And I really lucked out because I got two of the best business leaders in the world today as my mentors. But also, <laughs> literally not a day goes by when I don't think about something that each of them has said and the way that it shaped me or should shape what I do next. Um, but Jonathan may be the most insightful person I've ever met about people. What about in, me? In addition to the fact that he terrorizes smiley faces, that notwithstanding, and Eric may be the most insightful person I've ever met on scaling of all forms. Uh, communication, business, technology. Hey, can we say something about Marissa? <laughs> oh, we're, we've got about so, an hour to do that. We've got a lot of, of abuse for Mar Marissa. We've got uh, action items, user design, UX reviews. We'll get there. And so tonight I'm very excited to, have, to, to get a glimpse into more of their understanding of people, of scaling, and of how Google works, which obviously there's just immense interest in. So about the book, how did you decide to write it? What was the process like? What inspired you? you? You built half of this stuff. Why are you <laughs> asking the questions? You know because the you answers wrote the to book. the book. <laughs> you invented it, right? Well, I used to come back from Eric's staff meetings and I would get bored. So I would write down rules that people came up with when they said things that were insightful because if I had all the rules like repetition doesn't spoil the prayer, bank goodwill for a rainy day, when we got into an argument about something, I could get everybody to move along more expeditiously and go on to the next point. And then I would come to my staff and explain all of the rules. So in 2009, our head of sales said, we should pass all of this tribal wisdom on to Googlers. And so I wrote a speech, which you helped me with, notes for the best seller I'll never publish. People liked it. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan, you're so wrong. One, it is a bestseller. And two, we did publish it. You're and right. Marissa, why are you not a co-author? <laughs> anyway. So, you well, left. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> um, so, but it is a bestseller. So tell us about the reception. So you're in like week three of the book tour. What, what, you know, what surprised you about what people have taken from the book, how it's been received? Well, people are very hungry for new ideas. And uh, as you know, because again, you, you deserve a lot of the credit, I think along the way over the decade, Google pioneered a whole new set of principles of managing things. And whether it's the way we recruited people or the way we made decisions, which was sort of rather bizarre, as you know, um, it worked. And it worked remarkably well. And of course, the reason we wrote the book is because we, we all benefit, I think, by making American com companies stronger, creating more innovators, tr you know, trying this new model. I was concerned that there's a gap. There's sort of a, a huge gap between the world that we all live in Right? and then the normal companies. And that there's this whole generation of people coming out for which the normal companies, the traditional hierarchical companies, are just not designed. It just doesn't make sense to them. And, and they're very smart, very global, very quick, and they walk into these very hierarchical companies with very, very turgid management systems. That, that makes sense to me. It's funny, Re the, reading the book, I, you know, I felt like, that for me, there's so many things in there that are just values I hold dear that I was like, wait, like I can't, you know, I think I was sort of almost going to say to my husband, to my family, to people I work with, like, if you want to understand me and some of my values, read the book, because I think that there's just so much in there that defines a culture. One of the things that defines that culture is the hiring of great people. 
So what do you look for when you hire? How important is hiring? Yeah, I think, well, hiring is everything that you do. And we had a set of attributes which you helped us create, role-related knowledge, um, basic cognitive ability. But I think the main thing that we did that was different was we really looked for passion and we looked for generalists, not specialists. And I think the biggest thing that I learned in the first year was that technology was changing so quickly that if you put a specialist into a role, they're gonna look at that role based on their specialty. If you put a generalist and a learning animal into that role, they're gonna have the pliancy to roll with the punches and be able to deal with, with change. The other thing that, that was fundamentally different was the way we hired with committees, which I couldn't stand at the beginning and you and, and yours were, and others were largely responsible for. And you were ultimately in charge of this process. I was. Um, I couldn't hire my friends, which was a real problem, because I wanted to hire <laughs> lots more people like me, and you wouldn't let me. Actually, it's important you tell the story, right? That you actually complained about this? About the hiring. I, he complained well, about not being able to hire his friends. I and, did. And, and what happened was Marissa said, you should hire people more like Marissa. She did. And in fact, <laughs> which we did. And, and it was the right strategy. Do you remember this? Exactly. It was, yeah. I remember <laughs> it quite well. And, and she created this crazy yep. rating system. Go ahead. We rated people on a scale of one to four, which seemed easy to me. That one is bad and four is good. That's how I remembered it. Then she explained to me that no, four men. This person is so good, dear committee, that if you have the audacity to turn them down, you need to call me out of whatever I'm doing so that I can come into the room and fight to make sure we bring this person into my company. And one was the opposite. Call me, this person is so bad, I don't want this person in our company. And that was how we ended up rating people for committees. Yeah, the idea was that you took convincer or convincee roles, where you convince her positive, convince her negative, or convincee positive or negative. And that that is such a Marissa statement. <laughs> now you understand how it actually worked at Google. She would sort of make these things, I try to follow her logic. And it, so along the way, oh, the, go ahead. Her, actual, her actual most, let's take control of this. Her most important accomplishment of her many at Google was that one day she decided that we actually had to rethink the way product management worked. And at the time, there were three product managers who now run large parts of the company or a large other company. Separate discussion. <laughs> uh, and so the question was, how do we build that model in a scalable way? And so Marissa had the idea that we should hire people who had technical backgrounds but who did not want to be programmers. And she called these the APMs. And so her idea was we would take these people, and they're very, very young, right? You know, right out of college, green, never worked in a company, um, you know, sort of eager to do everything. And so she built it. And if you look at that group, almost all of the interesting startups in the Valley are headed by those people. And the major product lines within Google are headed by those people. So the model worked brilliantly. So Jonathan had the idea, sorry, Jonathan, that we should have work for these people. So he created something called the chain gang. <laughs> and the idea was that you had these sort of work stream and they would take these tasks. And this is how we developed them. Right, remember? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole program started with the bet. And actually, I can tell, it's, it's an embarrassing story for Jonathan. So Jonathan had been there. Um, <laughs> Jonathan had been to Google for four months. You want to grow product management in ratio, roughly, to engineering. We thought like one to 10, one to eight. Wayne Rosing hired eight engineers a week for all eight weeks. So he hired like 64 people. Jonathan hired two people making our total five at the time that the APM program started. And he gave one person to Susan and one person to Salar. And I said, when, when do I get my person to help me with my group? And Jonathan said, when you make revenue. <laughs> okay, so and I said, because like, so like Salar was doing advertisers and Susan was doing uh, you know, uh, partnerships and I was doing consumers, like Google.com. And I was like, but like, if there's no Google.com, then, like, then there's no revenue. And, okay, so you and Jonathan just said, like, I, I don't know. And I said, well, can I have a bet? Can I have a bet that I can hire and grow new product managers faster than you can hire experienced ones? And Jonathan said, well, sure, but what are you going to do? And that's when we said, let's okay, so go you guys hire, are hire tell, You guys are mistelling <laughs> all the stories. Okay? Look, they're in because the book, Jonathan. <laughs> this was the moment in my career when I was most upset with you. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Bill Campbell's office.